Howdy, fish and fam. I hope you guys are doing well today. Today we are continuing our Solix series. We are going to go over the basic controls, the different ways and methods of controlling your Humminbird Solix. Also, we're going to go over some basic menu items so you can learn how to navigate your Solix. So this video is really good for those of you who are new to the Solix or considering buying one and you want to learn a little bit more about some of the stuff going on in the Solix. So remember, this is a continuation of my series about the Solix, so make sure you check out the playlist. I'll have that up here in the cards above. But let's go ahead and power this thing on and get started. All right, so we got you guys into position to take a good look at the Solix. I want this kind of view so we can look at the controls over here. So first thing we're going to do is power this thing on. Uh, and one of the beginning things about the Humminbird Solix, or really any Humminbird product, it does take a little while to boot up. So if you're out on the water and you're not using your Solix at the time, or even your Helix, you want to make good use of the standby features that the Humminbirds offer. Uh, it increases your, your boot time, or decreases your boot time, because it's really still operating in the background, but at a very low power usage. So here, powering up, it's going to take a little bit. So once it's all powered up, I will uh, continue the video. All right, so it's booted up. All we need to do here is hit confirm or the little check mark over here. I'm going to hit the check mark just to keep some uh, fingerprints off of the screen here. And right now I have it in night mode. I uh, recently came off the water at, at dark. So the first thing we're going to do is take it off the night mode. We're going to brighten things up. Uh, we're going to take and over here in the top corner, there is a section here that we're going to want to press. You can press the screen here or you can press the uh, power button either one will bring it up and we're going to turn our night mode off okay so you guys should be able to see a little better so now that we have it powered up let's just start from the home screen here so here's the home screen before we talk about anything on here let's talk about some of the control options we have uh, over here are our non-touch screen controls starting at the top we have a knob which moves through menu items or increases and decreases the items that are selected. It's just a simple twist knob. Uh, here we have a plus or minus for zooming in and out. We have a check mark and an X. Select and escape, go out. We have a joystick here that allows us to move around on menu items as well. Um, and you can also click, press the center of this joystick to select items as well. So to go back, we're going to hit the X here. To select it, we can press the check mark. Pretty simple navigation here. Uh, for pictures and things like this, we have a little camera right here. And you also have a go-to for navigation. So if I want to hit go-to, it gives me the closest waypoint available, which we're not doing any of that today. So I want to close out of that. And if I want to take a screenshot, I'll just press it. Uh, no valid media available. Uh, so that means I don't have a card in there uh, for it to save to. So um, we can change the settings here. But for now, we're just going to close out of that. Uh, we have a mark button as a person overboard. So a man overboard. Uh, you can quickly press it and you can create waypoints. Or if you press and hold it, I believe it's just going to make a man overboard waypoint. See, uh, man overboard, MOB, and navigation failed. That's because it doesn't have any uh, GPS signal in here, so we're just going to escape out of that. Uh, we have our home button. Uh, this brings us to this menu. Uh, we have a three little line uh, button here. This is the menu button. This will bring up whatever menu option is available. So let's go to like our 2D here, and then I'll press the menu button and it brings up the menu that we can navigate through. Uh, going back home here, so we have this button that has uh, a few rectangles and squares on it. So this is for changing which screen is selected. So let's, uh, let's go to this dual screen here. So if I want to switch right now, we have the yellow box around the bottom here. That means that that's the screen that we're modifying, monitoring, uh, editing if I select 
uh, the menu here. It's under the SI menu. So I'm going to go back, escape out of the menu there, and I'm going to press this button and it switches over here uh, to uh, the sidebar. And I press it again. And here we are on the down imaging screen. And if I want to change that, okay, there we go. Going back home, uh, let's try the power button. If you just touch the power button, you get this power button menu. We have the backlight we can modify, the night mode, which I already showed you guys. We can turn on and off the touch screen. So if you want to uh, clean off the screen or something uh, while it's still on, you can turn it off. Or if you just don't want to use the touch screen option, you can turn it off here. Here's the standby feature I was telling you guys about. Uh, if you select standby, it puts it in this low power state. You can see how the orange is still on over here, stating that it's still powered. But in order to get it back out of the standby mode, you just press the power button and it comes back on. So when you're on the water and you don't want to be using, say, a console or bow uh, Solix, just simply put it in standby and that saves you uh, from having to wait through the whole power off sequence. Uh, you can turn off uh, your sonar, you can stop the pinging um, in this option, is, in this menu as well. Uh, let's go back and then you can power off from this one or we can select the sonar sources here. Um, here we can turn off all the sonar or select sources that we wanna use for sonar. So since we talked about all the control buttons over here already, I've changed some of the screen settings and some of my camera settings so we could see the screen a little bit better. Um, and we can talk about all the features here. Now, first of all, I like using the touch screen stuff. It's much quicker and easier to navigate through. And for the most part, when you're operating, the fingerprint smudges really don't actually bother me at all. It's usually the water splash of hard water that gets on here that bothers me the most. But fingerprint smudges usually don't cause an issue or really I can even recognize them. So here's the home menu, your base menu. We have settings, navigation data, views. We have alarms. We can talk about GPS, uh, trip log, timers, fuel, Bluetooth. We have images. Uh, we can record things, we can look at our sun and moon calendar, we have Wi-Fi, and we can continue down to all tools, and we have our files and setup guide. So that's the base menu for everything. Uh, over here on the left side, we have our sidebar. You can set that up for many different things. Uh, we first have our views. These are my favorite views, and we have two different screens here, star one and star two. Star one is the stuff that I use mostly. We have the things I like to do. And then star two has some other supplementary things that I do from time to time. Um, the, the ones that I use mostly under under star one. We can look at current temperatures, depth, our speed over ground, our course over ground, our current heading, and our actual position. You can fill the sidebar with things that you, that you like, uh, want to see, and that kind of stuff. Um, I haven't really played with this one. I'm not really even sure. I guess this is navigation uh, where you're navigating to a certain waypoint. Probably more important for you guys that are uh, out on the water, uh, some big water, and trying to navigate to points and not have references of, of land masses. Um, and down here at the bottom, I have my trolling motor control. Uh, my trolling motor is powered down now, so uh, it's, you won't see any of those options here but uh, clicking on this, you would be able to control your trolling motor. Uh, next, over here, we're gonna start on the main screen here. Let's go back to our views. Uh, we have settings. Our basic settings, or actually all of our settings are in here, um, starting with the chirp sonar. Then we have our chart, navigation, general settings, uh, things for our vessel, network, simulation, or we can restore our defaults. I'm not going to go through every one of these because each one of these I actually plan on making videos on because there's so many things that we can control and do within our settings to make 
our lives a lot easier. Um, so each one of these has its own set of settings behind it. And if I made this video about all of these settings, it would just be hours and hours long. And that's not the point of this video. So note, that's where our settings are. And I think I said mark, but let's just go back. You can hit the X here. Uh, you can hit home. You can always go home that way, or you can just hit the X. Uh, to go back to your screen before. So we're gonna hit the home button and go back home. Let's talk about nav data. So this is where all of our waypoints, spot walks, routes, tracks, eye tracks, all of this stuff is stored and you can look at. Uh, here's our options for waypoints, uh, routes, tracks. Uh, we can even create groups uh, within our data so um, said we only wanted uh, to look at our data points that were just rocky points. And I'm sorry, I keep moving the screen here. Uh, there, the uh, camera's here in my lap, so I apologize for that. So anyways, lots of options here for our navigation data. We can even go through our waypoints delete ones that we don't want, uh, modify ones that need to be modified, maybe they're off a little bit. Uh, and, and you can see I have over a thousand waypoints in here. That, that's because I bought a waypoint map for Lake Fork and about a thousand of these waypoints are for that. Going back home, we have views. This is where we can, can create our different views. Uh, if we want to create views, this is all the options that we can create, or we can make our own with new view. Um, so it's kind of cool to see some of the stuff here, uh, chart charts or 2D and DI, which is a very powerful one. You can see it's one of my favorite ones uh, here. Moving along, going back. So this is where we create all of our different views. Um, and if you want to select a view that's not in your favorites, this is where you would go as well. So going back home, we can create alarms for different things that are going on. Uh, we can create engine alarms, uh, temperature alarms, sonar alarms, systems and vessel alarms. So like system alarms could be uh, voltage. Uh, we can mute all of our alarms and we can actually look at our alarm log. Uh, see, we had a man, man overboard and we got some off course stuff here. Um, we can clear our alarm log. I don't really need any of this. Going back home, we have our GPS information. This is where we can troubleshoot and see what's going on with our GPS. Right now, I have no GPS lock because, well, I'm in a metal building. So, of course, it can't get a lock on our GPS. But we can look at satellites, signal strengths of each one. We can actually look at our GPS source. So right now I'm at a, oops, right now I'm on my external heading sensor. It doesn't have a fix and neither does my internal GPS. Going back home, once again, we can create trip logs. So if we need to manage our trip um, as far as number of miles or time, um, all of this information, we can save here, uh, probably more important for big water guys, probably a lot less important for bass fishing uh, scenarios such as myself. So uh, options here to record trips uh, and keep up with information about your fishing trip. We can set up timers in case we need to make sure uh, we're off the water at certain times or need to make sure uh, we don't lose track of uh, when weigh-ins and, and things like that are. Or maybe you're on big water and you're worried about tides and you need to uh, manage your, your time that way. Set this stuff up on here and it'll give you alarms whenever you ask it to. Fuel, if you have this plugged into your uh, outboard and you can, or your fuel system, you can keep up with how much fuel you have left here. 
and how much you're going to be using at that time. So you can make sure you have enough fuel for your trip or if you need to adjust your speed accordingly to make sure that you have enough to get home. Um, not a feature that I use, as you can tell, so probably won't be making too much of a video on that. Uh, Bluetooth connections. You can uh, connect your phone to your uh, fish finder and you can do uh, alerts and phone call messages here uh, just to make sure that uh, you stay in touch with the people you need to. I don't typically use this. I just leave my phone in my glove box here on my boat. If they need me, they can, I guess, call me and I'll pick it up. So this is where our images would, would save. So if, say you find something interesting uh, out on the water that you took an image of uh, underneath the water, maybe a, a sunken boat or maybe a, an interesting tree that you want to look at deeper uh, later on, this is where those images would be saved. We can record our sonar. So we can make SD or, car, or sonar recordings. Um, you can tell what you're record, tell it what you're recording, where to record it, uh, all that stuff. Uh, right now, we're not ready to start recording anything, uh, but this is for people like me who make videos about this stuff, or if you're just interested in learning more about it, looking more in depth at your sonar recordings later on. Going back home again, we can look at our sun and moon chart here. We can look at when the sun rises and sets on any particular day. We can look at our moon phases to make sure that we're keeping track of when those fish are night feeding. Looks like we got a, a full moon coming up here in October. We want to make sure uh, that when we fish, we're fishing in the evenings uh, on around the 9th uh, because those fish sure do like to feed at night. We can create our own Wi-Fi network and connect to different Wi-Fi networks. This is more important probably for updating uh, your Solix, but for now, Humminbird has actually disabled Wi-Fi updating, so you can't really do that anymore. Uh, we can create personal hotspots. Uh, we have our own Wi-Fi network and password here. Um, I guess if you guys ever see me, you can you know hack into my I'm a bird so looks here if you wanted to, but most of you guys will probably never see me. Uh, going back home one more time, we're going to go back to all tools. We can look at the files that are available to us. Uh, we can import and export um, data files, nav files, settings from chart plotter to chart plotter. So if your buddy has a whole bunch of settings that uh, you frankly like to use, you can go have him export his menu settings to a SD card of yours and all your settings, all his settings will become your settings, um, such as sensitiv the sensitivity and stuff like that uh, on your down imaging, side imaging. Um, and you don't have to go back through uh, page by page and try to fine tune all those. And lastly, we can go through the setup guide. Uh, I've already been through the setup guide you can go through your first time setup. I'm not gonna be doing any of this, so we're gonna cancel that. So if you just wanted, if you bought one and you just really wanted to go through the first time setup again, you could. Now we're back home and that's all the base menu stuff. We are gonna do more in-depth videos about each one of these and how to do certain features in each one of these categories. Uh, so don't worry, that's going to be a part of the Solix series. We're going to have a, a lot of fun with the Humminbird Solix, and you guys are going to get to learn a whole bunch about these. I'm going to have a couple things pop up on the screen. Uh, one of these videos is going to be my install of my Humminbird Solix that I did on the bow, and the other is going to be a link to this playlist. So if you're more interested about more things about the Humminbird Solix, be sure you check that entire playlist out because I'm going to be going over every single one of the features on the Humminbird Solix and how to use those to the best of my abilities. But until next time, see you later, fishing fam.